explained that lust covers knowledge and that ignorance binds us to the material world so beautiful detached work or karma yoga is the means given to attain transcendental knowledge chapter 3 in the explains about transcendental knowledge that uh, being um, transcendental knowledge allows us or elevates us from karma karma yoga to right niskam karma yoga and uh, and uh, intelligence, our intelligence is strength to overcome all the lusty desires so such an intelligence also we get is spiritual intelligence and having the power to purify our consciousness from passion to goodness so in this chapter 4 uh, what is transcendental knowledge so because chapter 3 ends at that position where transcendental knowledge is glorified so then the question is that what is transcendental knowledge and how it is received okay so to perform the highest level of karma yoga surrendering all works to krishna that is the karma yoga one must know who krishna is so chapter 4 will provide this knowledge what knowledge that what is transcendental knowledge how it is received and uh, how to surrender all things to krishna like that okay so first 10 shloka is about um, transcendental knowledge about krishna and then 11 to 15 applying transcendental knowledge then 16 to 24 understanding karma on the plate of jnana further sacrifices lead to transcendental knowledge then 34 to 42 conclusion okay so krishna is an absolute truth the supreme personality of god who comes to the world to protect eternal dharma one who knows is actually liberated so first uh, yesterday we did first shloka first to 1 to 3 the theme is that ancient origin of bhagavad gita and qualification to receive na bhag the history of bhagavad gita and who can understand or receive bhagavad gita and how it is received <coughs> so krishna explains that science of work explained in chapter 2 and chapter 3 is very old and authorized and he gave this knowledge to bevas one and then the supreme science was received through disciple succession okay so that is the answer that how it is received but in the course uh, of time the succession was broken so then krishna is saying that again i am telling this to arjuna who is qualified to receive the transcendental knowledge transcendental science so devotee friend uh, who like arjuna okay okay so text number 2 परंपरा प्राप्त इमं राजर्षयो विदु सा काले महत योग नष्ट पर दिस सुप्रीम साइंस वॉज दस रिसीव्ड थ्रू द चेन ऑफ डिसिप्लिन सक्सेशन एंड द सेंट ली किंग्स अंडरस्टूड इट इन दैट वे बट इन कोर्स ऑफ टाइम द सक्सेशन वॉज ब्रोकन एंड देर फोर the science as it is appears to be lost purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vidan swami shri prabhupad shri prabhupad ki jai it is clearly stated that the gita was especially meant for the saintly kings because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizens okay certainly bhagavad gita was never meant for the demonic person who would dissipate its value for no one's benefit and would devise all types of interpretation according to the personal whims so bhagavad gita knowledge is for the saintly kings why because that knowledge they can utilize in ruling over the citizens so how they will rule as if they will rule as per bhagavad gita then they will make good citizens okay but if uh, this knowledge is with demonic people 
Then what they will do? They will dissipate its value for no one's benefit and would devise all types of interpretation according to personal wills. So that is why uh, it is not given to demonic mentality people. As soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the uncircumcised commentators, there arose the need to re-establish the disciplic succession. Okay. 5,000 years ago, it was detected by the Lord Himself that the disciple succession was broken and therefore He declared that the purpose of the Gita appeared to be lost. Krishna Himself declared that and He Himself detected. In the same way, at the present moment also, there are so many editions of the Gita, especially in English. Prabhupada is saying there are many, many versions of Bhagavad Gita. But almost all of them are not according to authorized disciplic succession. No. So there are innumerable interpretations rendered by different mundane scholars. But almost all of them do not accept the Supreme Personality God Krishna. Although they make a good business on the words of Sri Krishna. So Prabhupada is saying that many people are there today who are commenting, who are providing their commentary commenting on the Gita, but they don't accept Sri Krishna, that's their problem. They don't accept Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but they are copying everything from Krishna and all the words of Krishna they are using, so that is there, but they are not accepting Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so this spirit is demoniac because demons do not believe in God but simply enjoy the property of the Supreme. So that's a demonic mentality that people don't un don't accept Krishna but use but they use Krishna's property. Okay, so that's not very good idea. Prabhupada is saying it should not be done. Okay. Okay. Bhagavad Gita is the words of Krishna and many people are making business out of it. That's what Prabhupada is saying. So people should not make that. But in Bhagavad Gita always should be understood in the disciple succession. Okay. Since there is a great need of an addition of the Gita in English as it is received by the Parampara Disciple Succession System, an attempt is made here to fulfill this great want. So, at present there is no such version of Gita. So, Prabhupada is saying it is very necessary to present a authorized version of Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita accepted as it is, is a great boon to humanity. But if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculations, it is simply a waste of time. So, if what the way Bhagavad Gita is spoken as it is, if we understand, then only it is useful, otherwise it is simply a waste of time. Okay. So, the presentation of Bhagavad Gita's history is a is very important here. Okay. Krishna, like yesterday in the, yesterday's uh, text in the first shloka, Krishna explained the whole history of Bhagavad Gita. So that itself shows that how Krishna is uh, transcendental. He is always there. You know? So when we understand this, uh, we develop a great faith in hearing and understanding Bhagavad Gita. That it's not very new, it's very old, it's historical book. No. Krishna gave this knowledge to even Sun God. Additionally, Krishna's claim to be the original proponent of knowledge that is more than two million years old is sparks a conversation that allows Krishna to reveal his supreme transcendental position. So Krishna is saying that even within before two million years also I spoke the same Bhagavad Gita. So we can understand the that Krishna is transcendental. Now, 
another point here is that krishna is saying that this knowledge was there it was broken the chain was broken and now again re and now again i am re establishing this chain so whenever the disciple succession is broken krishna himself re establishes okay and that is that authority is with krishna only so krishna only can re establish or krishna can send some his devotee because when the disciple succession is broken then here uh, krishna saying it was i gave it to vivaswan then he gave to manu chakku like that it was coming down it was lost so today i am reestablishing so who can reestablish krishna himself can reestablish so another point here is that it is very necessary that parampara should go on you know the disciple succession should move and uh, next 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 sometimes people say no this is the last guru acharya after that nobody can be guru you know and uh, they say because this is the final last guru after this nobody is qualified to be a guru so that means uh, we are uh, objecting that the on the qualification of that guru that he could not continue the parampara okay so many times people say that prabhupad is the last after that there is no guru so that's all not accepted here because even krishna wants that parampara should go on disciple succession should go on if that was the case that no further acharya or guru is needed then even krishna don't have any need to reestablish the parampara because you can say when anyway, this last acharya is there na everybody accept him only the guru take initiation from him no matter whether he is uh, physically present or not no. so but he did not say that krishna did not say that krishna is saying that because the parampara is lost okay somehow if it is lost okay i am reestablishing it so that is why krishna has this authority that he reestablishes the parampara but somehow the parampara should go on parampara cannot stop okay so if it is stopped then krishna will come and he will reestablish otherwise it will go on okay so next so acharya a guru can give the authority to the next level and then in this way the parampara will move okay text number 3 ಸುಪ್ರೀಮಿಸ್ಟುಡೇಟೋಲ್ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ friend very nice therefore you can understand the transcendental mystery of this science who can understand who is friend and devotee of krishna they only can understand not anyone this uh, relation uh, this ancient science of the relationship with the supreme what is bhagavad gita's knowledge It's teaching us the our relationship with supreme and this knowledge is today told by me krishna is saying that i am i am telling this knowledge to you because you are my devotee as well as my friend so anybody who is devotee of krishna he can understand only he can understand bhagavad gita others can only interpret they can only make some hear there some meaning out of their mental speculation original message of krishna can be understood only by the devotee of krishna so that is why when we take the original message of bhagavad gita in parampara then it is very easy to understand there are two classes of men namely the devotee and the demon the lord selected arjuna as the recipient of this great science when he is becoming the devotee of the lord but for the demon it is uh, 
not possible to understand this great mysterious science. There are a number of editions of this great book of knowledge and some by them have commentaries and some of them have commentaries by the devotees and some of them have commentaries by the demons. Commentation, so even the demons, Prabhupada saying even the demons are commenting on Bhagavad Gita. Okay, why they demons? Because they don't believe in the God but they take another meaning of Bhagavad Gita and they propagate something. Commentation by the devotee. Commentation by the devotee is real whereas that of the demon is useless. The demon's commentary is useless. Arjuna accepts Sri Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead and any commentary on the Gita following in the footsteps of Arjuna is real devotional service to the cause of this great science. So the way Arjuna accepted the Bhagavad Gita or the position of Krishna as the Supreme Personality of God at the same way anybody following in the footsteps of Arjuna he can also understand Bhagavad Gita and that is the real devotional service. The demoniac however concocts something about Krishna and mislead the public and general readers from the path of Krishna's instruction. So many demoniac mentality people are there they are saying that there is no Krishna actually there is somebody inside Krishna who is is speaking that supreme aham aham like Krishna is saying no so they are saying it is not this Krishna it is inside Krishna something is there that is supreme or like that many things they are telling okay and they are concluding that Krishna is not having no form Krishna is having no rupa like that many problems okay one should um, one should try to follow the discipline of succession from Arjuna and thus be benefited. Okay. So Prabhupada is saying that one should follow the path of Arjuna, the footstep of Arjuna and then in this way one will be benefited. Okay. So importance of Bhagavad Gita for royal order. So to rule the citizens and protect them from material bondage to lust. Number two, to impart Krishna consciousness and value of human life to citizens by education, culture and devotion. That's the job of the king, the royal order and in this way helps the pursue a successful path of human life. Importance of Bhagavad Gita being given to the sun god as the first disciple. This indicates that Bhagavad Gita is not a speculative treatise for insignificant mundane scholars but a Bhagavad Gita is a standard book of knowledge from the time immemorial. Krishna did not give this knowledge to any ordinary person. Okay. So it's not very cheap thing also. He selected Sun God because the Sun is the king of all planets and controls all planets and is rotating under Krishna's order. Okay. And then history of Bhagavad Gita, that Bhagavad Gita existed even two million years ago. Okay. Bhagavad Gita is a porshaya, not touched by humans because Bhagavad Gita is directly spoken by Krishna. Bhagavad Gita, like the Vedas are the sound vibration from the breathing of Krishna. So same way Bhagavad Gita is also the transcendental words of Krishna. So there is no difference between Vedas and Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is also Veda only and it is also a porshaya. It is not touched by human beings. Beyond the, Bhagavad Gita is beyond the four defects of conditioned human being. That is why one should accept Bhagavad Gita without any mundane, mundane interpretation. Okay. So then what is the demoniac spirit to approach Bhagavad Gita? Demoniac spirit to approach Bhagavad Gita is number one not following the parampara, number two principal interpretation and thus uh, dissipating its value for no one's benefit. Third, using God's property to make money. Okay, so using this uh, anything, actually everything is Krishna's. You know? So what people use those things and make money and enjoy, but they did not say thanks to Krishna. They are not grateful to Krishna. To accept it is a treatise of philosophical speculation. This is simply a waste of time. Some people think it is just a, some, some philosophical speculation. Uh, 
Uh, not to accept Krishna as he is and conquer something about Krishna. Not considering Krishna as he is, like Arjuna said, Param Dhanam, Param Dhanam, Param Paraman Bhavan, like that Krishna is saying, and that Krishna, Arjuna accepted Krishna as Supreme Personality Godhead, and so not accepting Krishna as Supreme Personality Godhead, and uh, saying that Krishna is something else, or many other concocted ideas, so that's all demonic spirit. Now, Prabhupada also saying in 4.2 purport that what is the importance of this edition of Bhagavad Gita as it is the Sri Prabhupada brought. So, most of the present editions are not according to authorized distributed succession. So, there is a, a, a there is a need of an edition in the line of Parampara. In the proper distributed succession, there, there is no such book. So, Prabhupada saying, I am bringing that book in English language so that in English language also, there is a authorized book as per the parampara so that we can revive the original purpose of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. What is the qualification to understand Bhagavad Gita? Arjuna's qualification, Arjuna is devotee and a friend, Bhaktesi Sakacheti. And Arjuna uh, accepts Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So unless one, ac- one accepts Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. So, what is real devotional service to the cause of Bhagavad Gita? Any commentary on Bhagavad Gita in footstep of Arjuna. Okay, this is the only way to benefit from Bhagavad Gita. Any commentary which is in the authorized parampara that is that can be accepted. Okay. Now in the fourth sloka. So because Krishna says that I told this knowledge. Two million years back, Arjuna will question now. Are you are same age almost? How it is possible like that? You know? So that thing, Krishna will clear, uh, clarify in the next sloka. So that we will discuss tomorrow. Okay, Hare Krishna.